Uh, hi, I'm Alex Hepburn. I hope everyone can uh, see the slides okay. Uh, I'm just going to talk a bit about, uh, for the first part, I'm going to talk a bit about uh, different packages and why Fat Forensics became a thing and um, some principles behind it. And then I'll go on to give some details about the hands-on session. Um, so uh, a lot of what we want to talk about is to do with like open source software. So we wanted to make sure that um, uh, when Talos came to us and said like they wanted to collaborate with us, we wanted to make sure we're open sourcing everything and everything's reproducible, it's well tested. There's a lot of uh, software design principles that we followed. Um, sorry. Okay, so that's unlike a lot of research software, which I'm sure most of you have experienced where you don't have it or they say we'll upload it upon this paper being accepted and then they forget about it and never upload it. So with research software, you're quite often lucky to have it. Oh, sorry, the chat. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, with research software, you're quite lucky to have it. Uh, as I said, like sometimes it just doesn't get uploaded. People don't get around to it or, or they don't want to. Um, sometimes it's not maintained, so often dependencies that it relies on gets updated and then when you try and run the actual research code it doesn't run for some reason um, so they don't often have like a requirements file on the github or anything like that uh, sometimes especially with deep learning you get quite lengthy python scripts so you have uh, a couple hundred lines that does kind of everything in in one bit and it's very hard to kind of pick out chunks of code that you that in particular you want to use uh, there could be heavy dependencies or unnecessary dependencies. So something like pandas is quite a heavy dependency. And if all you're using it for is uh, something like loading in your data or reading a CSV, like it's a very heavy dependency to have for something very simple. Uh, it could be over or under engineered. So something like 20 classes for doing something very simple. You just separate everything or you could just combine everything into one class. And um, yeah, it's there's a lot there's a lot of problems that people can have with research code, and shown is just like a little example photo with like what you could see in research code is based on a real world example where people haven't uploaded a module and you can't run the code, uh, which happens quite a bit. Uh, so one of the things that I was talking about is reproducibility. Um, we wanted to make sure that in fact forensics you can build code for other things so you can implement your own thing but make sure it fits into the into the package and it should be completely reproducible uh, so there's there's three things i want to go over there's vaporware which is the example i gave before was i'll upload this code on this paper being accepted and then i never upload it so th there's no code it's non-existent uh, there's paperware which is I upload the code, but it's it's very difficult for someone else to understand the code or someone else to use it. Like I don't put certain dependencies, or maybe I don't comment my code well, uh, which I'm quite guilty of. And then there's what we wanted to produce, which is software. We want to produce open sourced package, which is documented, tested, usable, and welcoming. So all this entails is sort of like basic principles like unit testing. Uh, putting examples online and tutorials and having the API, having uh, documentation where you can access the API and see what everything does. Uh, so essentially we wanted to make the scikit-learn for fairness, accountability and transparency. Um, there's a lot of GitHub repos for algorithmic transparency already out there. So on the left are individual explainers, which as Casper mentioned, like the surrogate explainers, they're not all surrogate, but, but they're there. Uh, these are packages that have one explainer within and they don't necessarily follow the same, um, they're not built all the same way. So for example, you could have one parameter in Lime and you could have another parameter in local surrogates and they're essentially the same, but say they use a different API and they're called different names, uh, that sort of thing. So you have Lime, uh, which Casper mentioned quite a lot. You have local surrogates, uh, at Anchor and PyCBox. And then on the right, you have these packages, which are like Fat Forensics, but for individual sort of things. So you have Microsoft's Interpret ML, IBM, Oracle, Explain Like I'm 5, and Yellowbrick. And 
all these packages have are like documented, tested, and they follow like good uh, design principles. But they each focus on one different aspect of transparency, interpretability, and explainability. And we wanted to make something that encompassed all of them. And this is why Fat Forensics came about, which was Algorithmic Fairness, Accountability, and Transparency Toolkit. And one of the things we wanted to make sure is that we also have access to the low-level API as well as the high-level API, which in a lot of the previous packages, uh, you don't. Sometimes you just get access to the high-level API, and you can't make small tweaks that you want to do. Like Casper was mentioning, like you want access to the building blocks of the local surrogate. You don't just want a local surrogate where you can tune like two parameters. Um, so how Fat Forensics came about was a collaboration between University of Bristol and Talis, and uh, quite a small team for a package. It's Casper, me, Peter, Raul, and then two other developers who aren't presenting today. It's Raphael and Matthew. And together we kind of came together and created this package. Uh, there's some design and development principles that we wanted to maintain throughout development. Um, we definitely wanted to open source it under the BSD3 clause license, which is anyone is free to use it. Uh, they can also commercialize it. Um, we wanted very minimal dependencies. So as I mentioned earlier, something like Pandas would probably have made a couple of things easier, but Pandas is like a very heavy dependency. So we ended up going with just NumPy and SciPy as, as the dependencies that you need. Uh, good and good software engineering practices such as unit testing, um, consistent code style, and continuous integration, all things that we wanted that are pretty common in the software engineering industry uh, that we wanted to also also do. And we also wanted the the documentation to be very friendly, so you can access API references on the documentation if you want. The this is quite sort of low level documentation where you can view like parameter names and what they do and that sort of thing. We also wanted tutorials, how-to guides, and code examples. So there's like a breadth of things that you can look at. And if you want to do something, it's it, there's probably a how-to guide, tutorial, or example that does it. So the scope uh, of the package is fairness, accountability, and transparency. And we break these three modules down into uh, separate modules further. So you have data, modules, and predictions. And these are either classes or functions that act upon this thing. So you could have a function that acts on your data or a function that acts on your models or predictions. And any of these could be fairness, accountability, or transparency. So for example, what Casper was talking about a lot was local surrogates. Uh, this could be in the transparency module, and it could be in the predictions, like why is the decision made, or in the models, which is where you try and see the, the feature, the influence that features have on the model. Um, but we, we also do fairness and accountability as well. Uh, but this tutorial is mainly focused on, on the transparency aspect. Uh, I think Casper mentioned as well, there's two use modes. So there's kind of deployment mode where you get data in, data out. And for example, if you're continuously training a model uh, in deployment and you kind of want to uh, monitor how that's going and whether you're introducing certain biases to subgroups and things like that, um, we wanted a deployment mode, and uh, I think the slides, uh, you can access the slides on the GitHub or from the events page, and if you click this link, it'll take you to a, I think it might take a while to load, uh, so I'll leave that loading for now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you click that link, it'll take you to the deployment mode of the package, uh, and then we also want uh, research mode which is um, what, what you're using the, um, in the hands-on aspect of this tutorial. And it's essentially if like someone wants an algorithm and they want to test and come up with visualizations like the one shown is just a decision boundary with a decision tree trained uh, from sample data and an explanation point. Uh, we want to be able to easily visualize this and to find some, to find some functions that people can use uh, consistently throughout different algorithms. We also wanted it to be extremely modular. So uh, if you remember earlier when I was talking about sort of uh, Lime, local surrogates and things like that, those were individual GitHub repos that cover one algorithm and they don't share certain things like the models could be in a different format, the data could be in a different format. 
or parameters with different names and that sort of thing. Uh, that's kind of on the left with bespoke code. And we wanted to do a very modular design, like on the right, where you have these kind of overriding algorithms that you can implement with your with the package. And they're made up of little modules. And these algorithms can share these modules. So you're kind of sharing an API or sharing an implementation. And it just makes things uh, a lot more consistent uh, across across uh, algorithms. So you don't you don't actually have like code consistency between uh, the different um, the different packages on the left. Uh, here is some functionality that we've already implemented, and so things like systematic bias, uh, sample size disparity, like whether your whether your labels are imbalanced. Um, group fairness, so whether you're unfair against a certain group, there's, I think Casper mentioned counterfactuals at some point, it's like what you can change to change your decision, uh, and a bunch of other things. And also in the bottom right, I think you'll see the tabula blimey, which is the Lime alternative that Casper kind of presented. And then we also have uh, some transparency features that are planned. So this tutorial mainly focuses on transparency, and I think in the future it's it's um, one of the things we want to focus on as well. So this is when you get your sort of image and text surrogates, tree-specific counterfactuals, decision, the decision tree explainer that Casper mentioned, uh, implementing anchors using our um, using the package, uh, and this is what we plan to implement in the future. So I'm just going to go over a few useful links that are are good to have a look at. Uh, this is the the GitHub repo for the package. Uh, that's also got a bunch of links on it, or you can just view the source code or view the tests or anything like that. Uh, we've also got a homepage for the package, which is fatforensics.org. Uh, here you c is where all the documentation is. So all the how-to guides, the examples, the API references, uh, how you can reference the package, all, all of that sort of thing is there. And also things like mailing lists and the, the Slack channel. We also published in the Journal of Open Source Software, um, so you could have a look at that. And we just we briefly, really briefly, discussed the uh, sort of how we implemented the package and design principles behind it, as well as in in a archive paper uh, that Casper Oral and Peter wrote. And this goes over the um, just yeah the implementation and how like why we did things a certain way. Uh, and now I'll talk about uh, preparation for the hands-on session.